Hey guys, today we're gonna start our Tom Nook tutorial series. So if we miss anything, we're gonna do our best, but if we miss anything or you have questions, leave comments. Leave as many as you want. We're a very small channel currently and we will try to answer everyone's questions. So fill the comment section, it's fine. We'll, we'll try to get to you. I, I can't promise anything, but I will guarantee we will at least make a solid attempt. So today, we're gonna turn the default cube into creepy Play-Doh Tom Nook. All right, let's get started. To begin with, I like to move my camera out of the way. So I hit N, which opens up item properties. You can manually set the location, rotation, and scale of your selected object here. In the outliner panel, I like to make different collections to keep my scene organized. To add a collection, just right click in the outliner and click add new. At this point, go into right orthographic view and add your side reference. Since the reference is facing the back, select it and rotate it 180 degrees on the Z axis. Repeat the process for the front, top, and bottom reference using the corresponding ortho views as you add them and try your best to line them up. I use the most extreme points of the model, like the tip of the nose, back of the head, back of the tail, to try to line everything up. Alright, after all this setup, it's time for the fun part! Well, almost. I am enabling some restriction toggles so that I don't move around the reference while I'm modeling. So disable its selectability, or like the little cursor icon. Select your main object, get over into edit mode, scale it down, make it a circle by using a subsurface division modifier. So the object more closely matches the reference, I'm going to position it and scale it. I go into face select, select the top face, extrude it upwards, scale it down, and position it. Go into vertex select, hold alt and select click the line in between two points to select the loop. Scale it down so it looks a little bit more like the body again. Now I applied the subsurface modifier to give myself some more vertices to work with and added another subsurface modifier. Now, select half of your model, and delete it, and add a mirror modifier, so that you only have to model half of it. Sa saves a lot of time. Half the time. I also enabled clipping. Hit O to enable proportional editing. Once you've selected a vertex, add your face, scrolling the mouse wheel changes the fall off. Proportional editing takes some time to get used to, so move stuff around until you're happy with the shape. I just try to get it as closely matching the reference as possible. Alright, I'm gonna start adding legs at this point. So I want this vertex to be the center of the leg. So select it, hit Shift S and cursor to selected. Shift A to add a circle, turn on connected only in the proportional editing menu. Turn off clipping in the mirror modifier, scale it down, and position it. So now with the circle selected, shift D to duplicate it, and position as many circles as you want. If you're experienced at modeling, just extrude this circle and use edge loops to get the shape you want. I put a circle before and after the knee, and one at the bottom of the foot. I want this vertex as the center of the leg, so I'm going to position it, and then delete it. Okay, face building time. Select these four vertices, hit F to create a face, and then the same with these four. And now if we spam F, it should autofill in these faces. Now build a little face bridge. Select these two vertices and spam F again and just do this the whole way down. 
control R and click here to add an edge loop. Loop select this, extrude and scale slightly, then hit F to fill in the bottom. Now just fix anything you don't like. Hit A to select everything, go up to the face menu and change the smooth shading. You'll notice some weird shadows here, which means some of the faces have their normals flipped. Alt N to recalculate all the normals outside. As with any model, it's just constant adjustments until you're comfortable with it. Toggle visibility of the reference back on and off to what you want, and make sure to turn clipping back on. Fix all the stuff that annoys you. All right, arm time. Find a vertex you want to be the center of the arm. I'm going to use this one. Position it and delete it. Then make the hole a little more circular and about the shape of the arm. I'll click an edge of the hole to select the loop and hit Shift S to position the cursor at its selection. Shift A to add a circle, scale in position, but make sure clipping is off. Turn off proportional editing and extrude his sleeve out connect with faces as we do. Select it all, smooth shade, and recalculate normals. So now the reference is in my way. So I'll toggle its selectability and move it. And since I'm over there, might as well just name them all. Now just keep fixing your topology until you like the way it looks. Select the sleeve, extrude in scale, and fill with F. Add in an edge loop to sharpen this edge. Alt select one of these circle loops and Shift D to duplicate it. Use it as the end of the hand, extrude with E, and scale as you go to make the entire arm. Put in an edge loop to sharpen the corner again. Select the very edge loop, extrude, and scale slightly, then F to fill in the face. So grab about where his neck would be. Change fall off to sharp, and then turn on proportional editing with O. Pull up the neck. And that should work, because essentially his head just sits on his body. Now it's floofy little tail time. Set the cursor to origin with Shift S, Shift A to add a cube, position and scale it, add a subsurface modifier, use C for circle select, select and pull the front face around and scale it. Apply the modifier, turn off proportional and extrude out of face. Scale down the face to make the angles match the reference and extrude out a little baby face. Add a subsurface modifier. Now, edit the tail so it matches the reference. Let's make his head. Shift A to add a cube. Scale and position it. Should probably organize and name our new objects in the outliner. Add a subdivision surface modifier and edit the object to roughly the shape of Nook's head. Apply the modifier. Do some more fine tuning with proportional editing. Box select half of the face and delete it. Add our friend the mirror modifier. And turn on clipping. Then add another subdivision modifier. Now position our vertices in preparation for adding the nose. Now we're going to do the same thing as we did with the arms and legs. Do this part whichever way you're comfortable with. I like my slowly connecting circles method. Get them all in position to match the reference. Select all the vertices on this side and delete them because of the mirror modifier and then make the faces. Double tap G to drag these vertices along an edge to get his nose shaped a little better. Now for the very tip of the nose. 
Go into one of the side ortho views and extrude this very top vertex forward and then just fill in the triangle faces manually. A much faster way to do this would be to extrude all of the vertices and then merge them in the center with Alt-M. It doesn't really matter how you get the shapes, just do whatever you're most comfortable with. And then as always, we'll turn on proportional editing and get the nose shape to look more like the reference. I like to toggle between the object and edit mode to get a better look at the shapes. Select all the faces and under the face menu, change shading to smooth. Well, it look alright now. We'll do the same for the tail. Alright, time to do the ear. I'll try to fit the ear into this face, so I'm just scaling it slightly. It looks good, so I'll delete this face. So now that there's a place for it, I'm going to quickly make an ear. Drop the cursor anywhere you got some space, shift A to add a circle, make sure clipping is off, and then with the circle selected, scale it down. Now clipping can be turned back on. Shift D to duplicate the entire circle, rotate it 45 or negative 45 degrees depending on which side you're looking at it from. Do it again, select these bottom vertices with circle select, and delete the vertices. So select at least one vertex on each half circle and hit Ctrl L to select all linked. Now Alt M to merge by distance, which will merge our overlapping vertices. Select our front half circle, and with proportional editing off, extrude the face forward with E. Now fill in the faces. Now select these two front bottom vertices and hit F to make an edge. Now open up your search menu with F3. Search for subdivide, and now fill in the front with triangles. The ear is basically done at this point, so position it in line with the reference and make it fit. And now get it shaped how you want it, with proportional editing. I'm going to turn off my reference and try to make space to attach the ear. Select the four vertices and switch to edge mode. Select this middle edge and hit F3 to search for subdivide. Now back into vertex select. The faces around the ear are no longer quads, so select vertices and hit J to divide these n-gons into triangles. Do this the whole way around. And now, almost as if I planned it ahead of time, we have the correct amount of verts on each object to connect them fairly nicely. So let's resize the hole a little bit. Now let's connect. F for the faces, A to select all, Alt-N to recalculate outside. Under the face menu, shade smooth. And it's looking pretty good. Let's change the shading on the arms as well. So now I like to add a plane as a light source to see the shape of my model a little better. So arbitrarily, place, add, scale, and rotate a plane. And it's time to do our first material. Click the material tab over here with the pink checkerboarded circle icon, and I'm going to change this plane's name to light. Go down to this material panel and hit new. Change the material to transparent. Resize this bottom panel and hit the drop down menu in its upper left hand corner. Change to the shader editor. Shift A to add a mix shader. Shift A for an emission shader. Drag and connect the green dots on these nodes as you see here. Select the mix shader and hit Ctrl T to add these nodes. If this doesn't work, go into the Edit menu and down to Preferences. Under the Add-ons tab, find and activate the Node Wrangler. So connect the object output to the vector input, which I just did wrong, but I'll fix in a second. Select this image, hit Shift-S and change it to a gradient. Change it to a sphere or quadratic sphere. Switch it to Material View. Change the strength of the emission shader, and switch into rendered view. Under the object property tab, go to visibility and uncheck camera if you want the light to be invisible. So this reference was based on an old Tom Nook model, I think maybe from the mobile game, 
So you can technically texture it at this point, and it's a dumb tom nook. Dumb, dumb tom nook. <laughs> it's a done tom nook. Don't forget to save your work. So join me next time, and we'll learn how to turn this model into the Animal Crossing New Horizons Tom Nook model. <laughs>